Welcome to this week's sermon as we go through the book of Romans. If you're new here, we'd love to know you and pray for you. Just leave a comment or message below. Get ready as we listen to this week's sermon. For the past few months that we are doing our church online, and today we return to our study on the book of Romans, and it's quite a special Sunday for today because we're going through Romans 9, 10, 11 in just less than an hour. Imagine you on. Now we'll try to uh, give you a summary of what the gospel is. And as you can see, in the past few months, we've been talking about the gospel. And for many, we think that the gospel is about the story of how just Jesus saved us. But it was, it's more than that. It's actually a bigger picture of when God came and chose the nation of Israel, and how Israel failed, and how God sent Jesus, and how God is going to bring about a new kingdom, a new heaven, and a new earth. And all of this now, as we discuss, we've seen it in Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and now we look at Romans 9 to 11 for today, right? So if you have your Bibles with you, please study Romans 9 to 11. Romans 10, in another week, we'll dwell more on that. We'll just get a few verses from Romans 10, and then I'll jump up to verse 11. So I'll give you a sneak peek of Romans 9 to 11 as we start. Let's bow down our heads and pray. Lord, guide us as we study your word. We know that your word is so full. Lord, we know that also in this limited time, I pray that you would speak to us and teach us your ways, your heart. Your heart not just for us, but for our nation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, this message will be so revealing of the very nature and the character of God. It will just make you appreciate God. In fact, in the middle of my sermon preparation, I had to stop and I had to clap my hands. I was clapping. I was giving the Lord a clap of praise because, Lord, you're so good. You know, and I had to go down and process it with my wife and with my kids. And then I finished my message. And I do hope and pray you get the same emotions that I felt while preparing for this message. Now, just a background. Israel was God's chosen people. So they would say, right? It's like saying, if you're an Israelite, you're God's chosen people. Jewish people are God's chosen people. And you hear that being said even right now. It's like, if you're Filipino, you're like this. Diba? Uh, ang Filipino, Katoliko, parang ganon. To be Israelite is to be God's chosen people. That was the synonym of, of being an Israelite or being a Jew. Now, we look now in verse 9, and Paul makes a case. He said, they are the people of Israel, chosen to be God's adopted children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenants with them and gave them his law. He gave them the privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises. In fact, when Jesus chose to go down here on earth, he chose to be a Jew. He chose to be an Israelite. Okay? Citizen of Israel, see Jesus. He did not choose to be Pinoy or Chinese. He chose to be a Jew. So Israel were God's chosen people. It was their belief that to be Jewish is to be, to be God's chosen one. Yan po ang paniniwala nila. And in some sort of way, it's true, but not fully true. Right? And so Paul now says in verse 7 of Romans 9, being descendants of Abraham doesn't make them truly Abraham's children. For God said to Moses, verse 15, I will show mercy to anyone I choose and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. So now, this was a big controversial subject at the time. Why? Because we're Israelites, we are God's chosen people, we are spatial, right? We're special people. We're God's chosen ones. We're the one that God chose. In fact, he is a Jew himself, right? So they were taking pride and their identity was based on that, that God has chosen them. You see, God revealed himself to Abraham. And, and in the book of Romans 9, Paul now tells us, yeah, God chose to reveal himself to Abraham and then to Jacob, Esau, Jacob, I love Esau, I hate it. And so they were making a case that, you see, we're God's chosen people. But then Paul had to rebuke them. And Paul told them, not because you're Abraham's descendants, you are children of God. You know why? And he talks to the people who thinks this way, like the Israelites. He said, 
God will show mercy to anyone He chooses. He will show compassion to anyone He chooses. If He wants to go outside of your race, all lives matter, guys. <laughs> he says He will do it. So it is God who decides to show who, who, who decides to show mercy. We can neither choose it nor work for it. For the scripture says that God told Pharaoh, I have appointed you for the very purpose of displaying my power in you and to spread, spread my fame throughout the earth. So you see, God chooses to show mercy to some. He chooses to harden the hearts of others, so they refuse to listen. So now, Paul was you know, trying to drive home the point. Israelites, to my Jewish friends whom I love, whom I pray for every time, I do hope and get and pray you see the gospel, you see Jesus, and you don't get blinded because of your concept that we're God's chosen people, no matter what we do, we'll have the favor of God. Okay? Well, then you might say, why does God blame people for not responding? Haven't they simply done what He makes them do? So now, the people were saying, oh, if that's the case, why blame? Why does God blame people for not responding? He chooses to have mercy on Lou and he chooses not to have mercy on Josh. So why blame God? Haven't they simply done what he makes them do? Right? Now, as you see here, we might think this is just all about God choosing a special group of people, but then that was not the context of this one. In fact, in verse 20, he says, No, don't say that. Who are you? A mere human being to argue with God. Should the thing that was created say to the one who created it, why have you made me like this? When a potter okay, makes jars out of clay, doesn't he have the right to use the same lump of clay to make one jar for decoration and the, uh, another to throw garbage into? What was Paul saying? Paul was addressing who? He wasn't addressing the Gentiles. He was addressing the Jews who thought they were special, who thought, oh, we have the favor of God and all other people, all other races don't have the favor of God. Don't you think sometimes we think this way? When we, the Christians, would feel we are the special ones. God chose me, right? I am the chosen one. You guys are not, right? And then Paul, and, and so Paul was saying, mm, okay, now the one, the, pot, the clay cannot speak to the potter that way. You saying you're God's chosen one no matter what, even though you failed God, when God did a plan for the nation of Israel to spread the gospel, and you failed God. So don't even say and don't even challenge God. Because not because you're descendants of Abraham, you're God's chosen ones now. Hmm? Okay? When you think you're the insider, let's think through that entitlement thinking. In the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, he's very patient with those on whom his anger falls, who are destined for destruction. He does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those whom he shows mercy, who were prepared in advance for glory. Okay? So, verse 24, to drive home what was being said, and we are among those whom he selected, both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. So now verse 24 was like, boom. It's like para sa mga Jewish people who were listening. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bakit may Gentiles dyan? Why did Paul, why would you even address the Gentiles? They're not the chosen people. And now that's why Paul's argument was, are you telling the potter, you the clay telling the potter what to do? Feeling mo kayo lang ang chosen? Medyo yung mayabang na ata kayo. Medyo entitled na ata tayo dyan. No? And sometimes this is how we feel as Christians. Feeling natin tayo lang yung special. Feeling natin tayo lang dapat na bless. And we are among those whom He selected by grace. Romans 5, 6, 7, 8. By the grace of God, 
He reconciled us, both the Jews and the Gentiles. Verse 24, right? God chose to include us, the non-Jews, in the rescue plan. In fact, for God so loved the world, John 3.16, that includes the Philippines, that includes all other nations, both Jews and non-Jews, including our nation. Wow. Parang pag tinignan mo, minsan ang misconception natin, may special group of people lang. Right? But in the plan of God, in God's sovereign plan, He doesn't think that way. Now, in verse 30 of Romans 9, what does all this mean? Even though the Gentiles were not trying to follow God's standard, they were made right with God. Right? They were the sinners. They were not the chosen ones of God. They didn't know the law. They were not exposed to Scripture. What does this all mean? Itong mga Gentiles, the non-Jews, who were not trying to follow God's standard, God now extends the invitation to be made right with God. And I'm talking about all of us now. If you don't have a Jewish blood in you, this is for you. And it was by faith that this took place. But the people of Israel who tried so hard to get right with God by keeping the law, ano sabi sa Bible? They never succeeded. This goes back to Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The people of Israel who knew God, where God revealed himself, where God used their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, the people of Israel, what did they do? They tried so hard to get right with God by what? By keeping the law. Oh, I'll do this for God. I'll do this for God. We'll get circumcised. You know, this is what we'll do. They never succeeded. Why? Because they're ba they base their relationship with God according to what? To what they can do for God rather than trusting what God has done for them. Why not? Because, look at verse 32, they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of by trusting in Him. They stumbled over the great rock in their path. Now, let's make this personal for you. Have you been trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of trusting God? You see, you can always try, 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 try. But if you don't trust, you can try and try until you die. Because there's no trust. Sad to say, I, I, I've been to Israel. And you go now to the temples and to the synagogues and the rabbis are still memorizing the Torah and the, and the Old Testament books. They are still waiting for the promised Messiah to come when it has been clear in Scripture that Jesus came. They were, they're still, imagine, they, they, they are still trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of by trusting in Him. If it's Sabbath in Israel, you can't even press many buttons in the elevator. It stops every floor. They're trying to keep the law instead of trusting in Him. So a generation now of Israelites don't want God. Why? It's all law. It's all do's and don'ts. How many of us, we started by grace? We understand we cannot save ourselves. We were desperate for a Savior and we trusted God. But now you're living your life trying to keep the law, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law so that God can love you? You see, the problem with the Israelites is that they tried, but they did not trust. You can try without trusting. But do you trust God? Do you really trust that God can transform your heart? The internal, your soul, rather than your external. You see, you can change your shirt, you can change your makeup, you can change your profile pic, but you can actually not have a changed heart. They tried, but they did not trust. They failed, 
They were God's chosen people, but they failed. Why? They did not trust. They tried and tried. And the Gentiles who were not trying, God extended it an invitation and they got it. They trusted. Dear brothers and sisters, verse 10, Romans 10, chapter 10. The longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. So as you can see, Paul was mentioning, I've been praying for you because you don't get it. You're still trying to keep the law rather than trusting in God. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is what? Misdirected zeal. You know, God's chosen people, oh, they really love God. To memorize the scripture, to follow all the rules of Sabbath, to follow all the laws of the Old Testament. It takes a lot of enthusiasm to do that. But Paul was saying it's misdirected zeal. Yung effort mo, yung ginagawa mo, hindi pinapagawa ni Lord sa'yo. Your heart is not where it's supposed to be and you're trying to do the actions rather than be transformed in the heart. For us, it's like you're trying to act like a Christian without trusting that it is the Lord who can transform you and change you. You still live under the New Year's resolution you made rather than the ability of the Holy Spirit to transform you, to save you, to redeem you. You don't trust, you try. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with Himself. Kaya nga ang tendency ng isang tao, our tendency, even as Christians, now that I have Christ, my tendency of me being right with God is for me to do things for God rather than build my relationship with God. You know? We measure our, measure, our measurement of success or intimacy with God would be on, you know, because I read how many chapters a day, I do this ministry, I do that, I do this. And we think that's the way. You don't understand how God works. God is asking for you to trust Him and not try to do things for Him. And that's why I think, you know, a lot of old people would say, especially those who have been married for a long time, trust is the foundation of every relationship. The reason I married Tammy is because I trust her. I won't marry somebody I don't trust. Sobrang dikit ng trust sa love. Do we trust God? Do we trust God in everything? When things go wrong, do you trust God? When things go really right, do you trust God? That God can sustain whatever that is or you're afraid, oh, maybe one day God would leave me and it won't be happy again. Refusing to accept God's way. They cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. Ay, napakalungkot, di ba? Hindi nila magets. For them, oh, that's too simple to trust God. I need to do this. I need to do that. While the Gentiles who were sinners, when they encountered God, they were so overwhelmed by the grace of God. They were saying, I need the Savior. I need somebody to save me. While the Israelites you know, we're God's chosen people because we do this and we do that and we do this. They trusted themselves rather than what Christ did for them. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in Him are made right with God. Okay? It's Christ who already accomplished the purpose for which the law, the Ten Commandments was given. Why? To show to us how sinful we are and we need a Savior. So, for those with the mindset of the Israelites, I'm trying so hard to keep the law. Okay? But for the non-Jew, wow, that's the law. There's no way I could fulfill that law. I need a Savior. I need a God. I need your grace. This was Romans 10. Now, we jump to Romans 11. So now the Gentiles get it, the Jews don't. 
does this mean then that God is so fed up with Israel that he'll have nothing more to do with them? Ang kulit nyo, hindi nyo makuha, hindi nyo magets, ang islow. Ganun ba si Lord? Hardly. How about victory group leaders? Are you like that to your members? Oh, we've been meeting for three years, you still don't get it. Ay! God never gave up. Hardly. Remember that I, Paul, the one writing these things, am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, out of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay? So we're not talking about reputation. God has been too long involved with Israel, has too much invested to simply wash his hands of them. Paul was saying, no, no, no. God's not going to give up on Israel. The same way God did not give up on the Gentiles, he'll not give up on the Israelites. Do you remember that time Elijah was agonizing over this same Israel and cried out in prayer, God, they murdered your prophets. God, they trashed your altars. I'm the only one left and now they're after me. Remember that prayer of Elijah? Oh, ako na lang natitira, Lord. Wala nang ibang tutulong. Wala nang ibang propeta. And the Lord says, do you remember God's answer? I still have 7,000 who haven't quit. 7,000 who are loyal to the finish. It's the same today. There's a fiercely loyal minority still. Not many, perhaps, but probably more than you think. They're holding on. Not because. It, please, look at this. Not because of what they think they're going to get out of it, but because they're convinced of God's grace and purpose in choosing them. We got it. God's favor is upon us. We're Israelites. God used our ancestors. Let's hold on to this grace and purpose of God. If they were only thinking of their own immediate self-interest, they would have left long ago. But they did not. And then what happened? Well, when Israel tried to be right with God on her own, pursuing her own self-interest, she didn't succeed. The chosen ones of God were those who let God. Okay, babagala ko to. The chosen ones of God were those who let God pursue His interest in them, and as a result, receive His stamp of legitimacy. The chosen ones, or the Israelites. Okay, so this is a play of term. Paul was saying, yung mga chosen ones ni God ay yung mga tao who let God pursue His interest in them. As a result, I am now a legitimate child of God. As a Filipino Chinese, I am chosen of God. Wah! Wah kong ah! <laughs> Hindi ako Israelite. One time pa lang ako na Israel. And now, Romans 11 tells me I'm chosen. Kaya ako na pa standing ovation kay Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shishini. The chosen ones of God were those who let God pursue His interest in them. It's those people who say, God, I surrender to you. I cannot save myself. I'm no chosen one, but you chose me. I am not worthy to be chosen, but you chose me. And the Lord says, those who feel that way, they are my children. You are now a legitimate child of God. And that's why my response was, Jesus, I surrender. Your will be done in my life. Lord, I don't need to change citizenship to be called the child of God. All I need is to surrender, to say, Jesus, I trust in you. I will stop trying to be your child. Rather, I trust in my Father who reconciled himself to us sinners, Jews and non-Jews alike. Lord, let your will be done in my life. The next question is, are the Israelites down for the count? Are they out for this for good? And the answer is a clear-cut no. And you know why I'm adding this? Because I don't want you to be proud. 
Wag na natin gawin yung pagkakamali ng mga Israelites. Ironically, when they walked out, and this is God's sovereign plan, and I want you to see this, all throughout history, all eyes were in Israel. God was going to use the nation of Israel to bring about the kingdom of God. But they failed. Disobey, 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 disobey. Basahin mo Old Testament. It's like a love and hate relationship between the Israelites and God. Like Israel will obey, Israel will disobey, Israel will obey, Israel will disobey. Hinati ni Lord, Israel will obey, Israel will disobey. Gusto ni ng hari, binigyan ni Lord ng hari. Israel obey, Israel disobey. That's the whole story of the Old Testament. Ironically, when the Israelites walk out, because they failed, they left the door open. And the outsiders walk in. Mga immigrants, tulad ko, mestizo. <laughs> At saka ni Lu, galing China. But the next thing you know, the Jews were starting to wonder if perhaps they'd walk out on a good thing. Teka lang, the Gentiles are now getting the message. Did we walk out on a good thing? What's happening here? Now, if they're living triggered this worldwide coming of non-Jewish outsiders to God's kingdom. Did you know? China now has the highest number of Christians in the whole world. Imagine. You know, Israel, a minority of their population, I think less than 2% are Christians. Now, if they're leaving, trigger this worldwide coming of non-Jewish outsiders to God's kingdom, just imagine the effect of their coming back. What a homecoming. So what was Paul saying? You see, in God's sovereign plan, God is doing something behind the scenes. Because of Israel's disobedience, the gospel now has been opened to all because of Israel's failure, the door has been wide open for non-Jewish people to enter God's kingdom in which Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. But I don't want to go on about them. It's you, the outsiders that I'm concerned with now. So Paul was now talking to the Gentiles. Okay, I don't want to talk about the Jew. I believe God will try to save them. God is reaching out to them. But I'm concerned with you now. Because my personal assignment is focused on the so-called outsiders. I'm called to be a preacher to the Gentiles. I make as much of this as I can when I'm among my Israelite kin, the so-called insiders, hoping they'll realize what they're missing and want to get in on what God is doing. That's the prayer. That those who don't get this, Lord, I pray that they would get it. Those who are trying to do things by keeping the law to find favor in God and the love of God, Lord, I pray that they would get, they need to trust first rather than try. If they're falling out, initiated this worldwide coming together, their recovery is going to set off something even better. A mass home coming. Oh, every tribe, every nation in the kingdom of God. If the first thing the Jews did, even though it was wrong for them, Turn out for your good. Just think what's going to happen when they get it right. So, wag natin erase ang Israel. Alam ko, as Christians, sometimes, you know, ano ba yung Israel? Ba't ba may Israel? Israel sa Bible. <laughs> Importante ang part ng Israel. And, and, and I think you need further studies. We need to further study about the role of Israel in all this because they're, they're part of the story. Behind and I'm about to end. Look at this. Behind and underneath all this, there's a holy, God-planted, God-tended root. If the primary root of the tree is holy, there's bound to be some holy fruit. Some of the tree's branches were pruned and you, us, wild olive shoots, were grafted in. Hindi po natural. We were grafted in. Yet the fact that you are now fed by that rich and holy root gives you no cause to crow over the pruned branches. Oh, wag ka magyayabang ha. Alam ko grafted in ka, pinasok ka lang. Ito'y malunggay, nagpasok ng kalamansi, okay? Kalamansi, wag kang mayabang, okay? Kasi tandaan mo, yung buhay mo nakukuha mo sa ugat nitong halaman na to. Green enough kayo. 
Jewish dapat, binigay ni Lord ito sa inyo at kayo yung lumalago. Okay? Remember, you aren't feeding the root. The root is feeding you. Magpasalamat kay root. It's certainly possible to say other branches were pruned so that I could be grafted in well and good. But they were pruned because they were dead wood. No longer connected by belief and commitment to the root. Kaya nagtanggal si Lord at pinasok niya yung mga na, ibang, ibang species ng halama. Species ba tawag doon? Ng halaman, di ba? The only reason you're on the tree is because your graft took when you believe and because you're connected to that belief nurturing root. Now I'm connected to the root which is Christ and that's why I'm growing. A non-Jew is now part of the family of God. So don't get cocky. Wag kang mayabang. And strut your branch. Wag kang magpakita ng muscles mo. Be humbly mindful of the root that keeps you leaf and green. Just be glad. And this is my ending. You're in the tree. And hope for the best for the others. Ang dami pa natin kaibigan, kamag-anak na hindi ito makuha. They think that I need to do good, I need to try, I need to try, I need to try. When they need a message that, no, no, you don't need to try, you need to trust. Because the Israelites tried keeping the law and they never succeeded. But the Gentiles who were sinners trusted God and they were grafted in just like you and me. You were saved. Christ loves you, not because of the good things you have done for God but because of His grace. And in His sovereign plan, in Israel's disobedience, nakapasok po tayong lahat. Wala na akong maitanong kay Lord. Lord, bakit ako? Hindi ko na lang tatanong yun. Magpapasalamat na lang ako. Palakpak na lang ako kay Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for choosing somebody like me. I want to lay all this out on the table as clearly as I can, friends. This is complicated. Kaya nga ang haba ng slides ko. It would be easy to misinterpret what's going on and arrogantly assume that you're royalty and they're just a rabble out on their ears for good. Chosen ako, siya hindi. Hmm. It's, it's, it's complicated, guys. Kaya wag kang mayabang. Okay? But that's not it at all. This hardness on the part of the insider Israel toward God is temporary. Its effect is to open things up to all the outsiders so that we end up with what? A full house. Before it's all over, there will be a complete Israel. Wow! Ganda nito! Ang ganda ng ending. You see, main point for today. God is a plan, and you better believe it. May plano ang Diyos. Sa'yo, sa kaibigan mo, sa kamag-anak mo. God is a plan for your loved ones. God is a plan for the people you're praying for. God is a plan for our nation. God is not surprised. God is a plan with all this COVID. No matter where it came from, who made it, how it happened, God is a plan. God is a plan for your business, and you better believe it. God is a plan for your loved ones. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And you better believe it because God is sovereign. We don't see it. The Israelites never saw it. But God has a plan. Because you have to remember, as it is written, a champion will stride down from the mountain of Zion. He'll clean house in Jacob. And this is my commitment to my people. Removal of their sins. And that's what Christ did. And Christ will come back again, a champion from the mountain of Zion to clean the house of Israel. And he will remove their sin. From your point of view, as you hear and embrace the good news of the message, it looks like the Jews are God's enemies. But look at from the long-range perspective of God's overall purpose, they remain God's oldest friends. God's gift and God's call are under full warranty. 
Never canceled, never rescinded. There was a time not so long ago when you were on the outs with God. But then the Jews slammed the door on him and things opened up for you. Not, now they are on the outs. But with the door held wide open for you, they have a way back in. So ano pong trabaho natin? Buksan lang ang pintuan. Come on, pasok! Here's the way, here's the way. Point people to Christ. And that's why we'll talk about missions in the following weeks. Because it's our job. In one way or another, God makes sure that we all experience what it means to be on the outside so that He can personally open the door and welcome us back in. I'm an outsider. I'm an outsider in the faith. I'm not a Jew. I'm an outsider in the Philippines. I'm Chinese. But look, this is my home. I'm part of a church called Victory. I'm not as good as my last preaching. I'm loved, unconditionally loved, by people around me, people of God, who has experienced this kind of love. You are an outsider that has been welcomed in, in many ways, more than you can ever imagine. Lahat po tayo, galing sa labas, pinapasok lang, kasi lockdown. Ne, ne, kasi mahal tayo ni Lord. Have you ever come on a- anything quite like this extravagant generosity of God? This deep, deep wisdom? It's way over our heads. We'll never figure it out. In short, mahaba tong message kasi hindi ko rin maintindihan. <laughs> we'll never figure this out. Bakit mo to ginawa, Lord? I'll never figure it out. I also don't know why Israel, dis- I'll never figure it out. It's just God's deep wisdom. He knows. Is there anyone around who can explain God? Anyone smart enough to tell him what to do? Anyone who has done him such a huge favor that God has to ask his advice? Everything comes from him. Everything happens through him. Everything ends up in him. Always glory. Always praise. Yes, yes, yes. At the end of the day, it's all the plan of Jesus. God is never surprised by everything that happens in our lives. May plan nga siya. You are where you are today. Because God has a sovereign plan for your life. Don't be like the Israelites who tried but never trusted. Trust. And you're in for the biggest surprise of your life. In fact, God has a sovereign plan. We just got to embrace this. 2020 has not been a good year for all of us. Literally. But God has a sovereign plan. I am excited for that sovereign plan. I want to end. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. Just a gentle reminder for all. When God said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For us, the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let's bow down our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, what a wonderful three chapters of God's amazing plan that we can never figure out. Lord, sometimes I, all I could remember is like, like watching a show that is so nice. That at the end, I, I, I just stand up and I just give God a standing ovation. This is Romans 9 to 11. I couldn't figure out the beauty of the plan. I can't figure out the plot twist. I can't. Lord, di ko alam paano mo ginawa. All I can do in response is to stand up and give you praise and give you honor. Lord Jesus, I pray today that we will stay humble knowing that even as outsiders, you welcome us in. May we open the door for those who have rejected you. May we continue to show the love of God the same way God showed His love towards us. Lord, we appreciate you so much for this wonderful gift of choosing us to be grafted in to be taken into your family as legitimate children of God, chosen, 
royal, holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, church, if you have questions, and I know some of you, you have a lot. If you want somebody to minister to you, pray to, with you, or if you want to be part of a victory group, please reply, message us, and say, I want to be part of a group. I want you to pray for me, guys, or I've got questions. I need answers. We'll be glad to minister to you. We have the whole week to do that, and we want you to be part of our community. Again, thank you so much. I can never say this enough. We miss you so much. And we hope to see each other again in the near future according to God's sovereign plan. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great week ahead.